And we're back. Pardon me. I've never actually heard that. I've just heard someone do it. I know it's from something. Dirty Dan here. What's up, Chris? <laughs> Hello, I'm Malcolm Bendall, I'm giving a presentation on the Sanskrit Shiva Lingam, which is also the application of the Hartman Whistle version of that sacred geometry. And I'll go through and explain that as just section 13 of 15 sections. So we'll get started straight away. The Shiva Lingam is uh, in the temples in India and it really represents the zero point. It's a zero point between male and female, positive and negative charge. The zero point between vortices, that is clockwise and anti-clockwise. In fact, it's very accurate to say that Shiva Lingam actually represents our thunderstorm generator. And that... I really don't think that looking at... <clears throat> He's basically looking at a particle, a balance point as a zero point, like, a, if anything, when it, the way he just described it. I feel like zero point is really much more focused on the actual ether energy, subtle energies, possibly, if anything, green visible light of something other than ether based. Uh specific meaning though I don't think it has the meaning he's described using it as maybe he like the way he's using it ha is okay as long as he's consistent but I don't think it's really relates to the traditional concept of zero point energy and it's just zero point I guess the pouring the gutter that comes from it is actually a pouring mechanism from that zero point, which is actually a very smart representation of our technology in the simplest terms. So, of our technology, I'm not at some of these Shiva. We don't know unequivocally that all Shiva lingam are man made. I would say undoubtedly many are not and are geological in origin and people just saw them and built temples around them because they knew the significance in some way or at least could recognize the significance in some way enough to make them places of worship places to of focal points to like spend time meditating around because of the actual energy in the, the location anyway so we'll get on with it so here's the normal shiva lingam that you see you know in riverbeds and also in the temples basically you have the male and female parts with the zero point in between and from that zero point energy flows and that's really a very genius way for anyone to communicate to future generations how you can have a, a positive and negative part with I do like that concept positive negative possibly with the positive penetrating Basically, so that it is within and then has a balance point that's a ring sort of structure that then energy like emanates from and overflows. It's interesting. Was this glow that we're on? Uh, this would be the uh, representing the ionosphere, and this would be representing the Earth, Mother Earth. And this would be representing the Schumann cavity. And then this would represent the flow of the energy from that. Uh, we'll just go into the next slide. If you take the transition in alchemy between um, 
square represents matter and the circle represents the ether. How do you take a square, which is matter, and transition to ether? And so basically the proposition is, is that you keep shaving off the corners and this creates a transition between ether and matter. So the next slide. So basically the idea is that, that this is the transition. You're cutting off the corners, so you're going from in this case, it's a cube, but there's four sides. Uh, you cut off the corners, so that becomes eight sides. This becomes 16 sides. This becomes 32 sides, and this becomes 64 sides. Now, as I explained with model of elements, that 64 is the maximum amount of points being 32 planes uh, to define the, I mean, the major elements we define on the, uh, the 16 points uh, with the noble gases occurring every eight elements, which makes the plane of noble gases in our model of the elements. So you've got, this would be the 16 planes of the, of the, the major elements occur on, sorry, eight planes here that the major elements occur on, the 16 points and 30, which would be you know, eight, eight planes, 16 points, and then you have 16 points here and 32, sorry, 16 planes and then 32 points, and then 32 planes and 64 points or nodes on that. So, so that's the concept. Once you've got 64, you'll see visually happens the same as happens in reality, is that when you have 64 points or uh, 32 planes, that's, that's all the angles that energy will report to and that's all the angles that define our matter and our frequency. So therefore, the concept, if you fold this in, then you've got the, your sphere, which represents the circle. So the sphere representing ether, which is the sun, which is a... a, a, a <coughs> okay, okay. One, two, three, four, five. I don't think it's eight sided. Don't think it's eight sided. I'm pretty sure it's naturally occurring, so it would be a good representation of fundamentals. Maybe it's eight sided. Is he saying eight? Sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, yeah, eight. Maybe it's eight sided. That would be interesting. One, two, three, four. It's possible. It looks more like more like nine or ten. Maybe eleven. Like I don't think that's half. Just since it's just straight on, it looks more like five and a half, maybe, so maybe nine at the minimum. Certainly is rounding out, which makes sense in general, I guess, for like a energy propagating upward, because it's really going upward in this instance so it's not so much as entering like a positive going into a negative it's more so a positive coming out of a negative within a greater positive of the overall region of like Girnar but like this region maybe was a void that then a protrusion was able to come up through and create this structure
it's it's in and it's not in any of these pictures. It's in this temple, this temple. At the base of the, this whole temple is built around this little thing. Like it's it's probably six inches, maybe a foot tall at the absolute most. Temple built around it. Emerged of its own divine intention. There's a story around it that doesn't quite align with my interpretation, so I'm not sure what to make of it, but it was just there. <laughs> that imprints time on the ether, therefore creating matter, which is cubical. And the sun is you know, 864,000 miles, and the, the sun square is 3, 4, 5, 6. If you subtract 864 from 3, 4, 5, 6, you get your, which would be coming in here, your proteum, which is when you... Uh, which is we called hydrogen water is hydrogen and oxygen so when that split up you got separate hydrogen or protein is the correct term and then the oxygen but then when you split up the uh, the protein you can separate the electron and proton easily that's the sacred geometry in this but it's actually a, a version of the hartman whistle and that means it can take in the case of exhaust gas, it can take those exhaust gases and the shock wave that comes with the exhaust or the shock wave that comes through. <clears throat> it's a kind of air jets generator with the characteristic of, characteristics of simple structure, absence of moving parts and high sound power. Expansion region, under expanded shock cells, compression region, termination region. <clears throat> I might benefit from actually figuring out what that is going forward because it doesn't seem like he's going to elaborate on that. It can amplify that and it can increase the frequencies to the point where you have frequencies as in ultrasonics that can affect uh, molecular com molecular compounds of carbon and hydrogen, so hydrocarbons. So it can affect the molecular structure of gas, petrol, kerosene, and diesel, and um, like even bitumen. And this is the in the opposite direction. Here's the same sphere. Here you'll notice with the sixty four parts the eye sort of basically itself uh, draws it as a sphere. I'll show you another angle oh, in this. Obviously, here's the square going back in the other direction just to make it obvious. There's your square cut away, which is this square here in the opposite direction. And here is equal and opposite thing. So in one way, I gotta explain. I gotta explain because it's got kind of funny. I, I don't know if you guys have seen. Uh, who? What's that dude's name? This is interesting. This is interesting. By the by the way, Beetlejuice one fifty six percent today, one fifty six percent yesterday, one fifty six, one thirty six. I never saw a one fifty. I've only seen in the thirties ever before one forty. Like in that range, 119, 105, 132, and now three days in a row at 156. What was I doing? Oh, yeah, Albert, what's that dude's name? Albert Morla or something like that? Yeah, this guy. Neck. <laughs> we are making this 
the Pfizer CEO. I was watching his. I found this interesting. This, I was watching Malcolm's Neck under the concept that maybe we're being invaded by reptilians, and they're like placing themselves in positions like here, and maybe Malcolm Bendel. So I'm watching his neck. <laughs> that right there. Look at what and what is that? This is a good question. What is with his neck? <laughs> She's a shapeshifter reptilian. <laughs> so anyway, back to this. You got it. If you like, as far as frequency goes here, you're increasing in frequency in this direction, and you're decreasing in so increasing in friction from this direction. But if you're going this way. You're actually decreasing, so you're going from your six, uh, your sixty-four, to your thirty-two, to your sixteen, to your eight, and to your four. So it's the concept of equal and opposite forces, and this would be a diagram. This would be my diagram of preference to 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 visualize, and we will later in this live presentation. The fact that you've got these. Um, equal and opposite forces of uh, male and female interacting. So we'll have another look at that from a different angle. So this basically gives you a, another perspective. Here's your, your square here, which is, as you said, coming, as I said, say if this is exhaust gas coming in here, this would go through this direction, uh, decreasing in frequency, which is the concept of expanding and this the exhaust gas going here would be going from a lower frequency up to a higher frequency and then the reverse reflecting back out of it so it's quite a neat configuration and um, the effects hitherto have been elusive as to why and how the Hartman whistle actually works but I think this answers it because I would suggest that this is a the real reason why it works, but you can have a primitive version of this, which is just, for example, a shaped tube or just a, a, a you know a blanked out square end. But you know that's a, so that's the blunt instrument. But this is your fine tuned instrument. So another view. So here's another view again, showing the the sphere to the cube, or the infinite to the finite, which is matter. So here's this is the concept in the sun i do like this uh idea i don't know if it works huh? but i like the idea it's it's permanence at rest and in matter is permanence in motion and this is a uh implosive force you can see this is wrapping imploding into this this point whereas the concept of the cube is it's exploding out on its corners so the transition from matter to ether or ether to matter is a matter of whether forces are clockwise and imploding or anti-clockwise and exploding. So I hope this clarifies the whole working principle behind our thunderstorm generator. It's a lot. I'm not sure where he brought clockwise, anti-clockwise in, besides just saying it right then, but... Complicated than anyone could ever imagine, but also it's quite simple once you understand it. So the next slide. Okay, this is looking down the barrel, as it were. Again, here's your sphere, but it's quite neat. You're looking from inside the other one. You can see the cutoffs there coming around and rotating around, which create quite a nice visual, and it sort of gives everyone an understanding of the fact that you're going to run into these. Like when you're coming here, these would be vortices because they're coming slots coming down so you have a vortice coming down from these and obviously going against this way uh, they'd be quite disruptive to the uh, the flows and that which and all these points would be sharp edges which would be uh, charge discharge points which are great when you actually want to have a thunderstorm generator happening 
but in normal circumstances, these, you know, what you're very careful about with our technology is that the spheres and everything is perfectly smooth and the transitions are smooth because otherwise anything on there that pokes out is going to be a discharge point, which you don't want in this system. So the next, again, this is just one element by itself. It's quite clear again, the exhaust was coming, for example, through here, then you, it would sort of be expanding out over the Hartman whistle, give a, a skate point, but this would go straight into the Hartman's whistle. And this red line is quite neat because it actually shows a, a tip point there, which is, by the way, very similar to uh, Stanley Myers. <laughs> plasmoid generator so it's quite instructive and it does look like some sort of instrument here or a telescopic thing and these ratios are quite important too because obviously this this is an octave you know because you're going down they're all sort of like obviously it's this is a four sides but so you, you know two one so one two four no, 8, 16, 32, 64. So it's an octave progression. And my notes in section 17 to 20 will show this, this progressions in octave tables, which are quite instructive in their own right. And the first part of the notes show the uh, implementation of this theory with a thunderstorm generator. Next. Here again is another look at uh, another angle where the exhaust gas would be coming in this direction. Uh, there's your uh, sphere uh, going in there, which actually you know, represents the ether or all frequency. Because when you have every frequency plane here, you have no frequency plane. So when you have all frequencies, you have no frequencies. When you have 24 hours, you have zero hours. When you have 360 degrees, you have zero degrees. And that's a paradox that our society didn't comprehend, but it's how I was able to put all those numbers, the MSAT plasmoid unification model. Anyway, it just gives you a better... I'm just thinking about it. A current comes in here, hits the square, at basically at the center of it, and then because there's a pressure coming in here continuously, it holds it in the chamber, which then it starts to fan out in all directions. So then it would pro it probably would ultimately end up going as it fills the pressure over here going along the wall but with like a spiral to it. I wouldn't be surprised if it could produce an eddy <clears throat> by just having that with enough current and pressure and then uh possibly do some interesting things. Look here and again You've got your uh, octave progression that's visualized there, which is pretty neat. There's a lot of applications for this with uh, plasmoid technology because basically these uh, cubes, plasmoid homes, they like the basic form. They like the cube. They like their 2,160 degree sum of the internal angles, which, which determines with other factors the resonance of the cube and the cube directs all energy into the center the sphere is imploding here and the cube is exploding because the corners are pointing out yep and this is just folding in here you have the mirror plane which i keep talking about tell them tell them what you've told them and tell them again is that no one will ever forget after this presentation the mirror plane there's the mirror plane and the mirror plane is your event horizon in quantum physics. But here again is your mirror plane. Yeah. And, and of course, everyone will understand that there's another. I was saying that's not really quantum. That's a general relativity concept of event horizon. Another mirror plane there as well that you can. And this is the secret of sacred geometry. If you look at it, it's all about male and female mirror plane spiraling left, spiraling right, you know, clockwise, anti-clockwise, uh, positive charge, negative charge. So here's the development of this. So basically, this just gives you the perspective. And you'll see here that there's 
this is putting these devices in inside each other so you have 432 here the ratio which is your ratio based on the 432 of the radius of the sun and of course the sun you view the sun as a disc the same as you view a clock the disc is permanence at rest and this the second hand is permanence at motion and how fast that goes determines frequency so the faster you go the, the higher the frequency the slower that progresses the uh, um, the lower the frequencies basically we'll do a cutaway of this so uh, people can see the image so this is say with a four inch and a three inch inside it and there's another one inside that but just to focus on the fact that here's you here you've got the exhaust gases for example could be coming in this direction and expelling out here whereas the in, input is is into this inside which will take the uh, the water vapor and the uh, generated plasmoids and that will charge the generated plasmoids and all these these points on this create not only a uh, again your mirror point expansion and contraction but also create discharge points which more effectively create points for lightning to dish or the plasmoids to make paths for lightning so another cutaway basically the sphere within a sphere within a sphere and now we have uh, what we're calling a shiva lingam so it's a hartman whistle thunderstorm generator so here's our thunderstorm generator and the central one here uh, as i'll just go over again so everyone understands the outside say it's your ratio four and that can be 24 inches or just four inches or this could be three inches or 18 inches and this can be two inches or 12 inches the idea is that the exhaust gases coming from this end would expand and then uh, flow out and then contract into this end and then inside that as i said you have your your cold air coming through and of course this can be a temperature of minus 85 degrees celsius whereas the outside here can be temperatures in excess of 800 to 1000 degrees celsius even though they're in direct contact with each other they're equal and opposite forces for every force there's an equal and opposite force for the heat on one side there's the cold for the cold on this side there's heat so it's a very much a dynamic positive dueling positive feedback loops as I said the center one which is cut away here is simply the swell guide then for uh, pushing out water sorry the water is gas phase and the plasmoids push them out in this direction this end has said minus 85 degrees this end can go down to as much as so we've recorded minus 40 degrees which we've just shown in our previous presentation slides so this is the last slide on this but this is a very interesting concept because it's actually the uh, the true basis of ether to matter and matter to ether molecular reconstructions and constructions and also atomic reconstructions and deconstructions and this is the complexity of this machine because once the plasmoids are involved they are the consciousness that reads reads and the blueprint of life and reads the blueprint of the universe and the blueprint of our solar system and it keeps everything in homeostatic control that is homeostasis is it keeps everything keeps time constant you know because time is a variable uh, lights a speed of induction not a speed of light it does not move it in inducts so anyway that's the last slide in this series and uh, i think people will be fascinated by uh, certainly in india about it. the true scientific relevance of what people thought was simply a spiritual observation i think this is what i've come here to say is that a lot of things that are dismissed as you know 
known by previous generations as sacred writings and now in these modern times we're in which are quite aberrant and against nature is that and against the nature of man against the nature of god and and really a manifestations of a real ignorance and the devolution of our society because if we lost lost this knowledge and then it was just put in the rubbish bin because it was thought to be just some spiritual mumbo jumbo it was actually coming from a higher level of plane of thought and existence than we're currently in so i'll leave you with that thought and the next slide that i'd like to introduce came up next is section 14 which is really the uh the uh the meat in this conversation ether matter time releasing energy by reconstructing matter using the zero point to affect the variables of by scooping the rocks around it. So Sorry, guys. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear Lord. I keep muting myself. Oh, this one, though, I was saying, doesn't have striations. Up and down it. But the Gurnar one does, so maybe that doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> But this one's so big, if it's naturally formed, then it would reveal significant features of the process, more so than other ones, perhaps. Although sometimes bigger doesn't necessarily reveal more, it becomes more subtle. Like, we don't know there's ammonites the size of the Colorado Plateau, but there are. <clears throat> um, okay, so in conclusion, I guess, after watching this one... I didn't find it especially related to the Shiva Lingam, honestly. Like, I see that he's kind of relating to it in that it's kind of like a male energy thing. It's just... But, um... had a thought of like a wind there's a place i forget what antelope antelope canyon very there's certainly places on earth i don't know if i'm gonna be able to find it that um look very vaginal vaginal like actually look like it though 
I don't know if I can find it. Uh, it might not be here. And I was just thinking, though, maybe a current comes through, literally, and carves etches by, like, a, by, like, that kind of thing. But that current, it doesn't just come out of nowhere. It comes from an overall current that's, like, hitting a resistance and forming eddies that then, I don't know why it's forming the eddies exactly, but forming eddies, maybe hitting resistance, creating a current sideways, uh, or out, maybe it's coming in generally, and then hits resistance, and then flows out, but then it wraps back around like this, and produces like testicles, <laughs> and then it protrudes, like it incurred by their com combined vortices, they force a protrusion through. Like there's things that he's not talking about that are relevant to the Shiva Lingam. Uh, I mean, I find it interesting. I don't. I just don't think it's particularly Shiva Lingam as much as Hartman Whistle plus sacred geometry things and applying. I mean, it might. It might function in a useful way. But anyway, I'll be back uh, possibly soon. How long is this one? 55 minutes. Two to go, guys. All right, I'll be back. Peace.